This is a three-minute audio introduction to a film called Conserving Lucian Freud Sketchbooks. The film lasts about five minutes and offers the chance to see the painter's sketchbooks in the company of project curator of the Lucian Freud Archive at the National Portrait Gallery, Tanya Bentley. Tanya is a white woman in her thirties. She has fair skin and freckles, her mid-length brown hair is worn loose over a simple black top and lichen green cardigan. She's in a light, airy studio and wears purple nitrile gloves as she handles a series of dog-eared books in all shapes and sizes. Some contain pencil sketches, some sketches in pen and ink, some in coloured crayon, and others have expressive images in watercolour. The film juxtaposes some of the sketches with the finished artworks. For example, Freud's large interior W11 after Watto, 1981-83, starts life as a sketch of a man and a girl with cross-hatched pen and ink faces and ends up with the same two figures painted in a theatrical expressionist style together with a woman and Freud's daughter Bella in a dress. They're sitting on the edge of a bed, all pressed closely in together with tortured downcast expressions. Bella plays a mandolin and the woman holds a fan. The room therein is flooded with light, exposing crumbling plaster on the walls and copper pipework plumbing a trough-like sink fixed to the wall to the left. We also meet Rosie MacDonald, paper conservator of the gallery. Rosie is a white woman in her fifties and has collar-length straw-coloured hair. She wears glasses with rose-gold frames and a black shirt. She uses magnifying goggles on a headband as she conserves the paper of the sketchbooks. Sayaka Fukuda is a book conservator. Sayaka is a Japanese woman in her thirties. Her black hair is chopped at jaw level and she wears a black and grey v-neck t-shirt. Sayaka mostly deals with the bindings of the sketchbooks. Archivist Karis Lewis is a white woman in her thirties with medium-length dark blonde hair. She wears a black suit jacket over a navy silk top. White Letters on Purple National Portrait Gallery. The sketchbooks span for his entire life, from adolescence to old age, and therefore allow for an in-depth exploration of his practice on paper. They vary greatly in scale, from a repurposed 18th century accounts ledger to very tiny pocket-sized sketchbooks. Some of the highlights of the sketchbooks are when you happen upon a study for a well-known artwork, such as a painting or an etching, and I think this is really where the sketchbooks reveal his working process. The sketchbooks are well-worn and well-used. Some of the covers have been torn off. There are pages that are stuck together, pages that have been torn out. There are coffee and paint stains on some of the covers of the sketchbooks. So you get a sense that these weren't pristine objects, but really part of his everyday working life as an artist. Many hours of planning have been put into putting these sketchbooks on display. The curatorial and archive teams have carefully catalogued and researched the sketchbooks to draw out the most interesting and precious material from them. The conservation teams have looked at every single page in the 47 sketchbooks and prioritised which sketchbooks and which drawings within them need to be conserved. I look after the works on paper, prints, drawings, watercolours, uh, anything that comes on paper. And at the moment, I'm preparing the Lucian Freud room articles. My main job is to stabilise objects and try and slow down the rate of change and deterioration in objects so that future generations can enjoy the works. We spend time reinforcing what we need to and um, doing some treatments to objects. A lot of them have been folded or creased and to prepare them for display, we just want to make them look loved and um, you know in good condition. I also had to do often edge repairs, we call them peripheral repairs, um, using Japanese papers and starch paste, um, which are stock in trade for paper conservators. Well, I'm a big fan of the, those 1960s watercolours that Arma in, in Venice uh, watercolour. Uh, I had to do a repair just of the end papers in the uh, sketchbook. But it's a beautiful sketchbook. It was bought in Venice uh, from, a, from a Venetian paper seller, if you like. Handmade block printed covers and this amazing Roma Fabriano paper inside. And then these watercolours that are in pristine condition. 
So I mainly deal with structural problem of sketchbooks. So the books can be handled or displayed safely. And some of them were in fine condition, did no, needed no treatment. Some of them required quite a lot of work, like um, that green account book I am working on right now. Yes, and uh, felt like some of them, even we couldn't turn the pages as the uh, books were falling apart, but it's coming back together as a one piece. He also cut out quite a few leaves from the book, so we can see some illustrations actually missing because like a, there are some offset image, but original is not. What happened is by cutting out pages, it kind of uh, compromised the st structure of the binding. So that had to be secured and also lost the, the spine of the binding. So that had to be attached so it can be um, viewed or displayed safely. The main research that we've been doing involves around identifying who the sitters are and then dating the works as well. So Freud wouldn't you know, helpfully write down, this was, you know, so-and-so who I sketched on, you know, X date, that just didn't happen. So we just have to look for clues elsewhere. So some, some people we're lucky that we can recognise because they're people who sat for Freud on multiple occasions um, and you know, they're well-known faces or it relates to finished artworks and others it's a lot more of a question mark it's you know it might not be a fully formed sketch and it is then trying to work out who who it might have been and also when it might have been created they weren't like sacred precious items to him like the way that we view them today they were very much like something he used as part of his work and it was his working method white letters on purple invite us to explore the collection npg.org.uk this film is made possible with support from Getty through the Paper Project Initiative. Audio description written by Louise Fryer and voiced by Fern Lullum for Vocalize.